Just got a jumping spider, want a complete guide on how to look after them? This is the video for you. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am David and today I'm going to be giving you a complete overview beginner guide to looking after a Philippus Regis jumping spider. Now this guide is tailored for Philippus Regis, but it may apply to other species. So I do highly recommend you look up your individual species name and their care requirements if you're ever concerned. Now before I get started, just to remind you, please do like, comment, subscribe to the channel. It does help, especially with YouTube the way it is right now, and it's much appreciated. Now the Philippus Regis, or Regal Jumping Spider, is one of the most charming jumping spiders you can get. They're full of personality, they look cute, depending on your perspective, and they can be very active hunters and very exploratory. They're also quite easy to handle, although I personally don't really like to handle my jumping spiders purely because I just enjoy watching them and they just seem to have more fun that way. But if you want to handle them, I will do a guide in the future, but this is more about looking after them than anything like that. So let's start off with the most simple thing, and that's their enclosure. You want them to have a nice, decent enclosure. Now we're gonna talk about a sub-adult or adult size uh, Philippus Regis rather than a smaller one, which you would need a more smaller tailored enclosure. For this, you kind of want it to be roughly 25 centimeters by 15 centimeters by 15. This can be a little bit smaller or larger, depending on your setup. This is just a rough guideline, but this tends to be the kind of standard that most people use for their Philippus Regis jumping spiders. And within this enclosure, you're going to want to add substrate at the bottom. This helps to maintain humidity, although you could use moss or something else. You could add some spring towels as well for a cleanup crew or some small ice pods just to clean up any mess or keep mold under control you're going to want lots of enrichment and things for them to climb on now you can have whatever decorations you want at the bottom they shouldn't really spend much time down there that's your theming i love my themes they're lots of fun but at the top it's really important to have branches it's really important to have platforms and it's really important to have a hide all of these things will be enriching for your jumping spider give them some places to sit and observe the world or bask but also give them somewhere safe to molt and also to build their hammocks. I especially recommend a hide. It's really, really useful for them, especially if they do are going to molting. Somewhere they can just hide in and go into. Um, Blossom, one of our jumping spiders, has a little cauldron hide. She loves sitting and peeking out of it. So providing a hide can be quite cute and beneficial for us too. Now, another really important thing you're going to want to monitor with your jumping spider is temperature. Now, generally, jumping spiders of the Philippus Regis variety are quite happy at room temperature. That's between 18 Celsius to approximately 25 Celsius. However, you do find, especially when you want them to encourage them to eat, you may need to raise that temperature a little bit. And if your house is very cold constantly, you may need to provide another heating source especially in winter as well. Now we use something called a snuggle safe. I'll leave a little link of it in the description. It's really useful, you just microwave it and bung it behind them. It's safe for them. It tends to keep the temperature at a stable level and also helps to keep them active. But you can explore other options. I've got a video all about jumping spider temperature, which I'll leave a card for right now for you. Another really important element for your jumping spider setup is light. Now, during the summer, it's not such a big deal or if you have a nice brightly lit room, but at other times, or if your jumping spider's in a dark area, you're going to want them to provide a dedicated light. They have an exceptional sense of sight, and you want them to use that and be able to hunt their prey. So providing a dedicated light for them, preferably a white light is really useful, and it also helps to make your enclosure look fun, and also for you to observe them and see all sorts of fun things they're getting up to. Next up is humidity. Um, this is something that's a bit of a contentious topic with some people, but I tend to go for a middle ground with it. You want to maintain a decent level of humidity in your jumping spider's enclosure. Philippus regions don't need tons, but they will need some. And a great way of maintaining this is through having substrate or maybe some moss at the bottom where you can just um, moisturize and moisturize it, you know, moisten it once or twice a week, and then maybe put little spritz on the side. Some people spray their enclosures. I find that's more relevant for mantids, whereas maintaining the humidity via the substrate is better for my uh, regis. Sometimes you can spray a little bit of water on the side just to give them something to drink because they will appreciate that, but it tends to be up to you on depending on your husbandry. The other thing is don't get it too humid. You don't want it looking like a swamp. You want it to be just nice and damp and maybe a little bit of condensation occurring on the sides of those acrylic walls when you're providing a bit of extra heat. You're probably thinking, why haven't you got around to food yet? I've, I'm, let's do food right now. So food is gonna be really important. We tend to feed our sub-adult and adult jumping spiders uh, green bottle flies. You can do blue, but it's sometimes a bit bigger. Mealworms, again, some people say mealworms aren't any good, but I reckon once in a while, they're really good for a little bit of a fat boost, especially before molting, and also dubia roaches. Now, some people do like to feed um, fruit flies, especially for smaller ones, that's fine, and there's no harm in feeding them to larger ones, 
but they're not very um, satisfying for them, especially when they get to adult size. Crickets, you can feed them, but most people advise against it purely because of the bacteria that they harbour sometimes, which can be potentially harmful to your jumper. If you do breed your own crickets, that's completely fine, but I would approach feeding crickets with caution, purely due to the amount of evidence saying they're not the best food for a jumping spider. Now, if you a very quick run through of how to feed them, we provide like food dishes where we can pop food in there for them. You can also leave them in their environment habitat to hunt, so they can find them and then remove them if they don't find them. Uh, you can you can do it in many multiple ways. I've got a lovely video which I'll leave a card for now exploring some of those methods that you can adopt. Now, something else important I want to cover for you guys in this sort of beginner guide to jumping spider care is molting. Molting is quite a scary time for a lot of jumping spider owners, especially beginners, and I want to give you some information. I've got a video dedicated to which I'll leave a card for now, but let's talk about it a bit. Your jumping spider will molt in its lifetime, especially if they come to you as a sub-adult, and it's really important to know what to do when that happens. In their pre-molt, they may not want to eat, they may act a bit differently, that's completely fine. When they go into their hammock and you see they're in there for a long time, try not to panic lead them to it and let them get on with it. What you can do is make sure that temperature is slightly higher and that humidity is slightly higher because that will help them with their molting process. You can provide a little spritz on the side if they do decide to come out to have a drink if they need it, but it's best generally to leave them alone. Now we've had the, uh, the horrible experience of a mismolt recently and it's not fun and sometimes there's nothing you can do to prevent it but generally you want to let nature take its course where possible. I will do a video in the future of what to do during a mismolt because there are some steps you can take but generally, as a beginner guide, you just want to leave it alone and they should just get on with it on their own and be perfectly happy if the conditions are okay. A little bit of information about their behavior right at the end. Remember, your jumping spider is arboreal. They will spend most of their time on the top of their environment. They will sometimes come down to the bottom to explore a little bit, but they all generally want to spend lots of time up there. That's why having lots of enrichment is really important, lots of options for them. They'll tend to make their webs up top as well. So generally you want a front opening enclosure so they won't be disturbed there. And you do not want to destroy those webs either. They love to explore a lot. They will sometimes react to motion, which is one way you can encourage them to hunt. And you will notice that sometimes they will gravitate towards certain areas and just sit there. That's completely fine. Just let them get on with it and don't worry about it. They are a very curious species. They will sometimes investigate what's going on in their environment. And it's really important to just let them do it. And um, also just enjoy the process of them sort of looking at you when you walk past. I'm just looking at mine now, he's looking at me. The other thing that I wanted to mention as well is they can be quite flighty and suddenly jump. So if you are handling them, be prepared that they may just jump. And also when you're doing enclosure maintenance, make sure they're not on the door or anything because they will just jump and you'll have to catch them. And if they do get out, you don't want to accidentally hurt them. They are very fragile as well, so be, do be very careful when handling them. So guys, that's it. That's a very brief jumping spider, Philippus Regis guide. I hope you uh, people who are beginners found it useful, or if you are experienced them, maybe there's some extra tips in there that are really useful. Anything I've missed out, happy to hear from you in the comments. Uh, just happy to hear from you in general. Love to chat about these guys, they're so fascinating. Anything else you want to say, yeah, get in touch. Otherwise, take care and see you later.